What's up? What's up, everybody? Happy Thursday to everyone. Um, this is the Helium 10 AMA, H10 AMA, and I cannot believe it. We are on episode number 30. Insane, Matt. Insane. Not 20. Not, not 20. 40. Not 40, but 30. <laughs> All right, Matt, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, Matt Benton. Good afternoon. Uh, if you're new to the show, uh, we do the AMA every Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesdays at 10 a.m. and Thursdays at 3 p.m. Pacific. It is Thursday, but uh, if you're new here, what is Helium 10, right? Uh, Helium 10 is an all-in-one tool suite for Amazon sellers, the most reliable, most accurate, and best value. Uh, we've got over 20 tools now, and as always, more coming soon. Uh, we've got everything from product research to keyword research to listing optimization, competitor spying, uh, giveaway units to rank on page one, hijacker alerts, keyword tracking, profits, our new financial analytics tool, uh, refunds, and like I said, more coming soon. We've got the guys back here working on a lot of new tools and uh, a few refinements to the current tools. Um, if you haven't downloaded the Helium 10 Chrome extension yet, you can do that at helium10.com slash extension. All right. Thank you very much. Welcome some familiar faces. We've got the Ha family online, John and Lindsay. Hello, Ellen. How's it going? Um, as always, whether you're watching on the replay or whether you're live, I'd love to know where you're from. Um, also, uh, are you a free member of Helium 10 or Diamond or Platinum or have never even heard of Helium 10? Um, let us know. And you know, let us know where you're at in your Amazon journey. You know, sometimes we don't ask that, but uh, I always find it fascinating. We have people on here every episode that are you know seven, eight figure sellers on Amazon. We've got people who are haven't even uh, found their first product that they're going to sell. We have people who have maybe one or two products from all walks of Amazon life. We we have our viewers, and uh, I just love to to see the variety. So um, let us know below, you know, what that is, um, where you are at in your journey. Anka, what's up? How are you? Welcome. Who else? Anka, how's it going? Ellen. Sha Sharia, how's it going? Amazing team. Martha Grace. What's up, guys? Welcome. Thanks for coming on. Diamond from KC. What's up, Martha? Hello. All right. Um, I said that there's, uh, or if you got that uh, messenger uh, notification, we have a couple of updates that have happened. You know, nothing major, but something I want to share with you guys in a uh, Helium 10 X-Ray, uh, which is in our Chrome extension. All right. So take a look here. Uh, Matt told you at the beginning of the video how you can install the Chrome extension. So if you don't have that, go ahead and do it. It's it's free to install. Let me go ahead and do uh, one of my favorite searches, as always, collagen peptides. Okay. So most things are the same with the, and this is interesting. The, the grid seems to be back to normal. I don't know if you guys noticed, but earlier in the week or last week, every single search that I did was like these humongous, um, these humongous pictures. Throw it up. Yeah. Let me show you guys. I'm sorry. I didn't even see it on the screen. Um, but these humongous pictures, but take a look here. These are, it seems like it's back to normal. So let me know. Did you guys notice that like early this week or on the weekend where all their search results were like these humongous pictures and it was like four or five across. Now it seems to be back to normal. So I don't know what's going on with Amazon sometimes. Um, all right. So anyways, this is our Chrome extension. I just went to collagen peptides, right? I'm going to do x-ray and we have a lot of our normal information right here. Now you might think, Hey, something might be up with the x-ray, uh, little pop in window because there's this scroll ball here, scroll ball, scroll bar right here. Now take a look. The reason why we have a scroll bar, I got to say that slowly, is because we have some new columns here. I don't know who has seen this. Let me know if, if you haven't seen this, but take a look. Before it used to end right here under uh, review velocity, right? That was the last one. For those of you who don't know, the last two updates that we had is we have review count right here, um, and which comes in handy because if you click on it, uh, what's happened sometimes is you can actually see when your listing or another listing might lose reviews. Like look at this ancient nutrition collagen protein powder. They had 1,207 reviews on October 16th, but October 17th, they went down to 1138. So they lost a whole bunch of reviews. Probably Amazon's thought they were doing something shady. That's why you see a negative number. So these were the previously the previous new um, columns. And review velocity is the reviews in the last 30 days that it's gained or lost. But now, watch this. I'm going to scroll over. 
and we have first of all the dimensions all right how might this come in handy maybe you're on a uh, product research page and you're not sure you know what kind of size uh the packages are for most people on this page well instead of having to go each and every one of the listings to get the dimensions you have that right here we also have the uh, weight the shipping weight of each product all right here you can see most collagen peptides products are between like three quarters of a pound and a pound and a half this could give you some insight um, if you're trying to calculate how much it's going to cost you you know to, to ship it you know via amazon along those lines we have the size tiers so look everything is under the one size tier that makes sense this is collagen peptides is a small product but if there was a whole bunch of oversized products on this niche that you're examining, um, well, then you would know that as well. And then the last one that I see, which is for me really, really cool, before you only have this visibility in black box, without actually looking in to the listings, take a look, guys. I can see the number of images that are in the listing, all right? So then you would know if on page one, there might be some listings that are not optimized. So on this one, you can pretty much see, I mean, collagen peptides, every single seller on here is just crushing it you know thousands of uh thousands of sales you know uh per month hundreds of thousands of dollars right here right uh, look at that total revenue on page one is almost eight million dollars just on what is it 16 yeah or no there's a lot of products here on page one but still 25 products or something eight million dollars that's crazy so you would expect yeah almost everybody's using the full images you know six seven eight but sometimes um, there was something I did a, a webinar this morning and I, uh, what was it? Vet wrap, something I had no idea what it was. I think it's for like when you wrap, uh, I don't know if you call that band aid. Yeah, I guess a band aid around like a horse's ankle or a dog ankle, um, something like that, right? So if you look here, take a look at this first page. First of all, this is quite a, uh, uh, a high search for something I've never heard of. Like 4,000, that's searched a lot. Usually if it's, I've never heard it in my life, it's some really obscure thing. Um, but take a look right here. There's a lot of listings here on page one that are not optimized. Like, look at this one. This one says it only has one image. Let's take a look if that's true or not. Yeah, only one image. Look at that, guys. So here's a guy on page one on this semi-high uh, search volume, and it only has one image. Here's another one, one image, two images, two images, three, four. So it looks like a lot of the sellers here in this niche are not that um advanced you know they don't even know how to put multi images in their listing so without having to go into black box or go into literally each listing here and open it up i actually now have the visibility to kind of see what level the sellers are at you know to me this might be something that would require further investigation because if half the sellers don't even know how to make the listing well it probably is not going to be too, too difficult to get to uh, page one. So let's go ahead and get into the nitty gritty now and get into the meat of our broadcast, which is going to the Helium 10 suite of tools. And we're going to answer your questions that you guys might have. Meat and potatoes. Meat and potatoes. All right. All right. Let's see. Let me pull up our questions. First of all, meantime, let's go ahead and check. Maybe you can check on there what kind of questions we've been getting, uh, Matt. Yeah. While I set this up over here, let's see. John is talking to Mike over here. We got people talking to each other in our comments. Profits beta is the bomb. Uh, Jason says, cool. Let us know how you've been using it, Jason. And we'd love to know how you're using it and what you like about it, what you think we can improve. Let us know. Let's see. You see any questions there, Matt? You could, tackle right off the bat i do not uh tom says hey guys this is tom we use the helium 10 platinum plan been uh been awesome for our business thanks tom love to hear that you're loving the tools let us know what we can improve what you love the most what you don't like uh how, yeah let us know sharia has a question how dimensions will be uh if product is fulfilled by fulfilled by merchant well that you still have an um you still have a space where you can put that in seller central. So yeah, if they put that, you would still have that information, but it would be blank if nobody has ever entered in the dimensions for that product. So that's a good question. Uh, we've got Anka is actually from Houston. Ma, brother and mom are from Dallas. We got a lot from Texas, Texas representing today. Um, let's see who else we got here. Ryan is here. Please read my question. Well, where's your question, Ryan? Is it from, did you, did you enter it in, um, let us know where it is so we can go find it. You know, we, we never, um, 
delete anything from the helium10.com questions until we do it. Like I did a, a episode just the other night and I was doing stuff that we had overlooked that was from like almost two months ago, but no matter when it's come from, I'm gonna get to it, I guarantee it. So let me know when you did your question, Ryan, and we'll go ahead and do it. Let us see here, Reiko says, hello, Reiko. Reiko's following all over the place. She was on one of my um, virtual live workshops. She snuck in there right somehow, on. even though she's awesome. a Helium 10 uh, paid member already. Within scribbles, all unused words go into the back end keywords box. Where exactly do they go within Amazon Seller Central keywords section? That is a very good question. So if you have not put uh, one of your keywords that you definitely wanna put um, into your the front end of your listing, that's where the other keywords goes and that's gonna go into what's called the search terms. Search terms is a field where you have space for only 249, I believe, bytes. All right, not characters, bytes is what I'm hearing now. And so you would put the ones that just don't fit there. Like what kind of things would you think, Matt, you'd wanna put in the back end that just for some, that just won't, doesn't seem right to put in the like bullet points or description? Yeah, I don't know, uh, we'd have to pull up a listing to, I don't know, it'd be easier to do this in Cerebro or Magnet, but, oh man, I don't know. Um, How about some Espanol? Yeah, exactly. That's a great one. So your misspellings, mm -hmm. your Spanish keywords that you find, um, yep. just things that wouldn't normally fit or make sense in your listing or your public facing listing. Uh, cause that's where you want to have things that are, are readable and because your, your shoppers, your human beings, uh, read your listing. So things that aren't, that don't fit there would probably be best in your back end. I completely agree. So that's what you would want to do. And there's a couple other fields you may or may not have depending on your category that are other than search terms for the back end. And that would be the uh, subject matter. So some of you guys have a uh, one line of subject matter you can do, and then you can put like 49 or 50 bytes, I believe some categories I heard have five. I've never seen it, but, um, or I've never seen it on any accounts that I have access to, but I've heard people on here show me screenshots and say, yeah, look, I have five lines of subject matter. So there's another 250 total because it's 50 each line or 49 each line. So you have a lot of real estate in the back end that you could uh, possibly uh, utilize. Yeah, and John's helping us out. John said misspellings, different languages, different uh, different terms used, street lingo. So yeah, it's exactly right. Things that normally wouldn't go in on your listing itself would be good for the back end. Excellent. We got a couple other questions here. This is why we can never get to the the old questions, Ryan, because everybody is so good at ask us, asking us questions here. It's like, we got to do this. And I don't know why Mike is talking about how hungry he is and he's having a whole nother conversation right here on our, our live broadcast with, with somebody about food. So that's cool. It's all good. We get the comments. We like it. Um, Orion says he submitted it. All right, we'll look for it. Remind me to look for Ryan's cool. uh, thing. Got it, Ryan. We'll keep, keep an eye out. Um, from Tom, quick question between the new x-ray dimensions and profitability In profitability. You have a buy box also profitability. Um, and then the x-ray perfect. It, it's coming off. It's exactly the same. It's coming off of that same field in Amazon. The only difference is now, you know, with profitability, you have to go on each product page to get there or click on the calculate fees on each listing but now with x-ray everything on the first page now you can look at take a look at the dimensions right there just with one click so that's kind of cool i think it's kind of cool maybe tom is not easily impressed um let's see oh good question jeff champagne hey guys when i use the cerebro to do a reverse asin on my product versus my four competitors melts my heart to know people are starting it's getting it's catching on people are using this technique i love it jeff um, if I am ranked out of five, whoa, 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 wait, 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 I'm reading this wrong on um, my product versus my four. Okay. Okay. If I'm, oh, I missed, I did. I knew I misread it. If I am ranked four out of five and the keyword is in my listing, should I increase my bid for the keyword in the PPC? There's different techniques that you could use. That is definitely one of them. Um, you might want to see where that keyword is in your listing. Like if it's only in the back end or something, did he say where it is? No. Uh, no, yeah. So, like, if it's only in the back end, then, and you really think it's super important, well, if it's a super important keyword that you want to be ranked higher, then maybe you need to put it to your title. Maybe you need to put it in your bullet points. Um, maybe you need to, you know, put it a couple different times uh, in, in your listing. Um, so, you you could also do a um, giveaway, right? You know, using the CPR guide. Maybe you're ranked number five, but not only that, everybody's on page one, and you're on page ten. 
Well, if you do the PPC route, nothing wrong with that, but it might take you a month to, to push it, to push it up. But if you're using the CPR number to do a launch or a giveaway, you know, like on Facebook or using a launch service, you could literally get to page one within four or five days and then see, hopefully you can stay. But if you don't, if you don't stay on page one for that keyword, that means you're not converting organically. And maybe that there's something going on with your listing where, um, your competitor's product appeals to people looking for that keyword, but for some reason, not yours. So that's something that you have to, you know, look into as well. And yes, like you said, you could definitely increase your bid, uh, on sponsor products and with your, your PPC. So that is, hello, top. Anya, you rock too, Anya. Thank you very much. Um, let's see what else do we have? Any and all words up to 250, up to 250 bytes. Yes, in the search terms. Yeah, uh, search. Yes, yeah, search terms. Yes, that's that's your back end uh, keywords. Yes, but that's not much. You know, if each word is 10 letters or 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 something, that's only 25 words. Eight letters. It's whatever it is. So just right. keep that keep that in mind that you won't really want to get. You really want to save that for just the stuff that just absolutely doesn't make sense to be in the front end. And and Matt mentioned a couple of those. John mentioned a couple uh, here as well. Here's Ryan. Ryan, is this your question that that you had submitted or is this a new one? All right, Ryan says, I'm gonna put it down here because I can't see. What do I do if my competitor owns the top three to six sponsored ads on all main keywords? My competitor has, excuse me, multiple listings under the niche and is bidding extremely high with all his listings, taking up all the sponsored ad space. I could bid that high, but it would be extremely costly. All right, so first of all, how do you know what he's bidding that's 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 a question i have because um it's not always that sometimes just amazon favors certain listings that have maybe a longer history um maybe it has a long history of converting for that keyword so they're going to give the preference always but i'm not sure how you know that they're bidding really really high unless they told you because we don't have I mean, I don't have visibility to see what they're they're bidding for. But if that's suggest if you're talking about the suggested bid, you know, keeps going up and you can't afford it, well, yeah, you can't afford it. You might just have to like you got to count your battles sometimes. You know, if if he wants to just dominate that page and the and the only way you can do it is if you start bidding $6 and that loses your profit, well, why would you want to be on that? You know, why would you want that anyways? Maybe the better thing to do is focus instead of PPC on just organically increasing your rank to there, or again, going back to the CPR guy, doing a launch and getting there organically because organics uh, are going to have better results than a sponsored ad anyways. Okay. So, and I'll add to that too. So if you're, if your budget, this is Ryan, Ryan, if your budget isn't uh, big enough to compete with him on those three to six, I guess, keywords, you say top three to six keywords uh, that, I guess you've determined for your product, maybe you just pick one and, and outbid him on that one. And so long as you have a good product and a good listing that converts well, maybe you just overtake him one keyword phrase at a time. Uh, but like Bradley said, like maybe this seller has a ton of history or they're converting really well because no matter if you're uh, bidding for keywords on Amazon or Google or Bing or wherever else, what wins at the end of the day isn't necessarily just a high bid. It's also a, a high converting product with a good click through rate, a good conversion rate. And ultimately Amazon doesn't just want the folks who bid the highest. They also want the products that convert. So he very well could be bidding lower than you. It's just, he converts better. So a few things to consider. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that was Ryan, right? We got Kaloon here. Let's go. She has a question. Do you think it'd be too competitive to try and rank for broad seasonal search terms? So for example, Christmas gifts for girls and where would the best part of the listing to include this? Let's go ahead and go into magnet. Take a look at that keyword. So let's go magnet right here. Let's search this Christmas gifts for girls. And at the same time, I want to take a look at how it looks in Amazon. All right. So explain please what magnet is, Matt. Yeah. Uh, magnet is one of our two keyword research tools. It is our seed keyword research tool where you can enter in a seed keyword and we'll return all the most relevant keywords to that seed keyword. So first of all, um, you know, it might be early. Uh, I pretty much guarantee this number is going to go high. I mean, it's barely November, uh, even though already it's November 1st and I'm seeing Black Friday ads. Um, I guess it's never too early to start 
uh, planning for for Christmas. It, it keeps getting early so, soon. Uh, December twenty seventh, you're gonna start, you know, seeing Black Friday uh, ads for two thousand nineteen. It's ridiculous. But anyways, right now this doesn't seem like too high of a search volume for um for this. So it actually might be a good time right now to target this. Only two thousand eighty two. Let me see um what the actual CPR number is. Christmas gifts for girls. First of all, look at how many keywords have Christmas gifts for girls in them. That's pretty crazy. All right. There's like uh, 11 here. So whenever you target one, you're going to get a little bit of juice for all these other Christmas gifts for girls. And so 72, yeah, it would only take 72 over eight days to Love get it. to page one um, as it is right now. So uh, I would, I, I would definitely, if, if your product you think is relevant for it, I would definitely think about targeting it. Let's take a look at the actually how it looks right now. Um, what kind of things are coming up? All kinds of, see, the, and, th and this is kind of why it's hard when you have a generic search term like this right. is because you can have a, what, what do you call these things? Um, uh, there's a word. Globe. Yes. You can have like a snow globe here. And then the very next product is a jewelry box. And then you got a necklace. So you, if there's collagen peptides, everything on page one kind of looks the same. Tactical flashlights. Okay, I know this product is relevant, but Christmas gifts for girls. If somebody's searching for that, first of all, they obviously don't even they have no idea what they want. You know, I feel right? like I feel like if you're going for a keyword like that, you'd almost have to have the top one to twenty uh, top products for Christmas gifts to be able to to stay there and compete. I mean, look at this. This is like all over the place. So like you, a. Yeah, a, so a stocking stuffer or something like that. But here's the thing to do, guys. Right now, this maybe is an accurate representation of around this time of year or around December, when, what is going to be hot selling. But I'm still not convinced because it, it was yesterday was October. All right. So this is what you got to do, like for next year. What you do on this page right now, um, or if, let's say this was December, maybe twentieth. All right. That means everybody's kind of done their Christmas shopping and the dust has settled. The rankings are kind of set now. What I would run is I would run. What do you think I'd run? Would I run x-ray or something else? Uh, I missed what you said originally. So what, okay. I'm going to go with ace and grabber because uh, Matt usually completes my sentences, but he's, he's thinking about somebody else right now. I don't know what's going on with Matt. He's, he, he's, this has got his uh, creative juices. He's like, oh man, I have all these uh, Christmas gifts to get for my nieces. Um, so He's thinking about that. All right. Something so I would like use that. acing grabber. So Matt, what is the difference between acing grabber and x-ray? You know, I mean, it right. looks like it some visually almost looks the same. So what's the difference? Yeah. Um, you know, I, so I would use ace and grabber to do what Bradley's about to lead into. Right. So is, is get a snapshot of the product or the market at that time of year to save it for next year. So if you are interested in selling like seasonal type products, which can make you a ton of money, uh, it's really hard to do that when you're out of season. Uh, so I would use Ace and Grabber to take a snapshot of what that product or that market looks like at that time and save it for, for next year. Yeah. So that's how, cause like whatever is showing now, like, especially if this was July 1st or something, and I did a search of Christmas gifts for girls. Well, whatever's showing up on page one is probably not, um, what is the indicative of what the organic bestsellers are around Christmas time. So that's what I would do now. So then let's say you see that and there is a certain trend. Like I don't even see two of the same product on here. Like everything is literally completely different, but maybe around Christmas time, it kind of narrows down. Like maybe you see three or four little mermaid, uh, what do you call these things? Fins or, or something like that. Right. Then you're like, Oh, okay. I know I need to go ahead and rank for that. Um, or do a product based on that. So at this time, like if you were going to do it right now, you already got your product already ready, Kalun. I might go ahead and go because right now it's there's not that many searches uh, on this yet. But I I would expect that number. What did we say that number was? Two thousand and eighty-two. To grow. I, I expect that to like probably double by at least or maybe five x by the time um, you know December comes around. So, um, but again, my 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 warning is be careful with these search terms that are so broad and, and don't have a, a set uh, relevant product. And so to wrap that up, like if you do have a product that would convert for that search term, now would be a good time to get in the door before search volume goes up and the amount of giveaways that you have to do or units to sell to rank uh, gets out of reach.
All right, let's see. Um, here's a good question. Does the uh, URL campaign work on social media? Absolutely. We even have uh, a Facebook guide uh, to help you know how to put your uh, Amazon you know, giveaways or uh, coupons going on Facebook, but you can even do it on Instagram. It's a little bit harder on Instagram because you can't put links right, you know, inside of a, a post, but you could tell people, Hey, look at the uh, link in my um, bio and you can have that go to a certain search on Amazon. I would even say that uh, links on social media work better. Amazon loves outside traffic. Why wouldn't they? Uh, so yeah, definitely works. Uh, what else? Oh my goodness. Look at this. We got a novel here given restrictions on PPC and guys, if you're wondering why we can never get to our old questions, <laughs> you guys are so good. I love it at killing us with the, uh, with the live questions. We love it. We used to be, nobody would ask questions live in like episodes one and two, but now everybody's doing it. Alan says given restrictions on PPC and Facebook ads, because my product got reclassified as hazmat, it's been challenging to rank for the relevant keywords. Uh, should I swap those keywords in the search terms and back end for long tail keywords instead? I thought about trying to rank for one keyword with a giveaway, but that's too difficult to do due to Amazon's limit on storage for my item. So let me take a look at this. It's worth mentioning. John actually commented there too. He said, Alan, oh wait, I must've lost it. He said, I guess John has tried to rank a product, uh, hazmat product as well and had some issues with it. So, yeah, so you got You got to be careful. Sometimes it's funny because, um, some things you you can do on Amazon and you can't do like on Facebook. Some things you can do on Facebook, but you can't, you know, vice versa. Like uh, so, some diet companies are not allowed to give Facebook ads for, you know, whatever reason, like they're blacklisted, you know, but obviously you can do PPC in Amazon and even uh, headline ads. Actually, you can't even do anymore for so certain diet pill markets on Amazon. So there's all these kind of restrictions. So then maybe you did some research and you thought that this is a really good uh, keyword or something to do, but definitely do a little bit more research. If you're in the, if you have something about hazmat or diet or, or topical products, right? Before going out and making some whole big plan and investing something, really make sure that you're going to be able to do what you want. Because I had no idea that you couldn't do headline ads. You know, when, when I was trying to work on one for a, a diet pill company a while back, and they're like, sorry, you know, we're not, we don't do appetite suppressants for headline ads. I was like, what? You know, I, I had no idea. Same thing, you know, Facebook, you know, might block you. So make sure to do your research if you have, like you said, you know, a hazmat product. But yeah, if you're being blocked by it, check what other keywords are. You know, that's the beauty of Magnet and Cerebro. If you're checking your competitors, you're going to get a list of hundreds, if not thousands of keywords. And a lot of them are golden keywords that you can use. Don't just try and focus on just one or two. And then if it doesn't work, give up. Try another uh, keyword. Do, do, do. Let's see what else here. So many questions. Where did the Lindsay says, where did the year go? Tell right. me about it. Like, how is this November already? My Unreal. Goodness. Tom with the quote of the day, whoever isn't using helium 10 in their business, you need this suite of tools. All right, Tom, your checks in the mail. Thank you for that. Can you rank with CP? You think he's talking about CPR? Probably talking about, or can you rank with CP or cost per click? Maybe Are you PPC. PPC maybe? Do you mean PPC, Alex? Uh, After having five reviews by spending launch money on PPC rather than giveaways, can you rank with, I mean, reviews, uh, as if you're converting with PPC, if, if that's really what you mean, um, if that's what you're referring to, Alex, if you're converting with PPC, uh, it, I mean, conversion is the name of the game whether it's organic conversion, whether it's PPC, whether it's an outside traffic, uh, whether it's a, a giveaway and a launch, I mean, whatever you're converting on a certain keyword, Amazon is going to give you a reward for that. Because remember, Amazon is all about the buyer experience. They want to show you products that is going to make you most likely to purchase it. So anything that tells them that it's more uh, your customer or this customer is more likely to purchase it. You're going to get an increase on that. So if you, regardless of if you have a thousand reviews, five reviews or one review, if you're converting on PPC for a keyword, yes, your rank is going to increase. Absolutely. And is right. And is PPC a method of, of giveaways? Yeah. There's so many people who use just PPC to, to launch and rank. So yeah, absolutely. Max says, I have two questions. When you're launching a new product and doing a giveaway, should we target the long tail keywords your competition is ranking for or, 
or the highly competitive one. What URL is working these days for ranking canonical URL, store URL, or brand URL? All right, you can't you can't see our our face, but that's fine. We'll go ahead and and uh, and answer these. I want to I want to keep these up. So as far as the first question, it goes both ways. You could do the co the competitive one or the long tail one, but what I highly recommend is running the uh, comparative ASIN test uh, in Cerebro to make sure that regardless of if it's a high volume keyword or a low volume keyword, that it is highly relevant to your niche. And the way you do that is by getting four, five, six, seven of the top selling competitors in your niche that um, are all on page one for a certain keyword. And, and those competitors need to look exactly or really, really similar to your product. It's not like that Christmas gift, Christmas gifts for girls where I'm going to go ahead and compare the words from a snow globe. Um, let me go ahead and hide this real quick, you know, fr from a snow globe. Um, where's my mouse? There we go. Snow globe to whatever this is, uh, fairy garden, you know, Stamp pad. and this one is, um, water bottle kit. I mean, imagine comparing the keywords for all those. You'd be literally, comparing it to a million and they probably don't even share any main keywords other than Christmas gifts for girls. So uh, I'm talking about a more niche down um, keyword or a product. You want to make sure that you're the same as your competitor. And then from there, take a look at your budget, you know, always the highest volume keyword, as long as you know, you can get to page one and you know, you're going to convert organically. Okay, that, that's the way to go. I mean, that's the most eyes in your product, but it might not be economically feasible for you. Ooh, that's a fancy word. Economically yeah, feasible. <laughs> Where did I come up with that? <laughs> it might not be economically feasible for you to give away a thousand units. And that's fine too. That's why right here you have these list of other keywords like right here. I don't know what I did right here. Yeah. Christmas gifts for girls. This is the thing I did for Kowloon. And I might say, you know what? Christmas gifts for girls. I can't afford 72 units. But is there something else I can do? Well, take a look. I would do, if, if I was Kowloon, I would go ahead and do top Christmas gifts for girls. Only two, or only eight units I have to give away. I would give Christmas gifts for girls age 10. Eight units I would have to give only for that. And maybe good Christmas gifts for girls. So what's going to happen now? I'm not going to get as many eyes on my product for these three. I'm going to get a little bit. But then I'm going to have a little bump on this one too. If I start converting for these organically, organically Christmas gifts for girls, even though I didn't target that keyword, I'm going to get a little bump too. So it's all about your budget. And the second question I like is what URL is working these days for ranking canonical store or brand URL. Um, there's four that, uh, I recommend using, um, or that we're going to have in the gems page right now. We only have, let me go ahead and show you guys what I'm talking about. Gems page. Right now, I don't think it's available yet, but I just put two new URLs that we're going to start using. If it says five, that means it still has got the original five. Yes, five. All right, it's going to be seven. You're going to see soon seven here. So the ones that you can use right now are our storefront. Um, for many people are finding that it's not as effective as it used to be. So guys, sometimes a storefront's going to work great for you. Sometimes it's not. Don't just keep you using the same URL if it doesn't work for you. Switch to this two-step via brand. And then there's going to be two more um, URLs that we're going to have on the gem page. One is by, uh, we call it a field ASIN URL, and the other one is a keyword ASIN URL. So make sure to try all of them and see what works best for you because it's different for everybody. So thank you for that question, Max. <laughs> Look at this. Alan says Facebook classified one of the items in his product as a weapon. Uh oh. All right. Yep. I'm Facebook telling you, Facebook is doesn't. tough. Let me tell you. Yep. Let's see. Um, Kaloon, again, this is up to you. Um, I mean, high obviously would be, you know, 100,000 is high, but maybe for you, 20,000 is high. There are some niche markets where the most popular keyword only has like 4,000, you know? Um, and, and so technically that's high, you know, but just think about number 4,000 eyes every month on a, on an exact search to me, that's high, but compared to collagen powder, 150,000, maybe it's not high. So it's all a matter of uh, perspective, right? So yeah, if you're, if your search term or long tail keyword has 4,000 and no one else has a product like that, you may very well convert for the majority of, of those searches. So it's all, all relative. Um, uh, Matt. Can you take care of Eric? Where can he find the ASIN grabber? ASIN grabber in the Chrome extension. So if you haven't downloaded that yet, helium10.com slash extension. 
Bradley's going to open it up and go to Ace and Grabber. If it's grayed out, uh, a lot of you may notice it's grayed out. You have to be on a search results page on Amazon or uh, a product listing. Actually, no, you have, for Ace and Grabber, you have to be on a search results page. Uh, for X-Ray, inventory level, and review downloader, you have to be... I'm sorry, inventory level and review downloader, you have to be on a product listing page and X-Ray either on a listing or search results. So if it's grayed out, you're probably not on the right page. Or some things, um, if you're on the free version, you might not have access to as True. well. True. All right. Um, let's see. Mike, are we catching up? I think so. And I forget who was talking about Facebook a second ago. What do we say? Facebook is tough. Facebook is a beautiful thing. It's complex, so it's tough for that reason. And they're also uh, really, really good at, at catching you for doing things you're not supposed to. But Facebook is an awesome, awesome tool to use for Amazon and to drive additional traffic to your listing. So Facebook is a beautiful thing. Francisco sent my first inventory. Congratulations, nice. Francisco. Got active yesterday, started a PPC campaign. Already uh, seen him on page one, sponsored, but haven't seen a single sale yet. How long does it take to know if you have sales? If you're in Seller Central, if you're in Seller Central, uh, it's immediate. As soon as there's a sale, you're gonna see it in your dashboard, even under uh, pending. You know, even if it's not fully uh, confirmed. As far as if you know if the order if the order came from PPC or not. Sometimes it takes like 24 to 48 hours for those reports. For for whatever reason, Amazon PPC uh, reporting is always uh, behind and lagging. So, um, but if you sell at all, whether it's PPC or regular, it's going to show up in your dashboard right away. Some of these questions I'm seeing twice. I don't know if there's a Facebook glitch here. Uh, can Helium 10 help you find FBA hazmat items? No, not at this time. I don't know of a way, but if you know of a word that you know is hazmat, you know, like, I don't know, what's a hazmat item? Like, um, you know, lead battery. I, I, don't, I have no idea, but let, let's just say lead battery or something. So you could go to Black Box and do a title search for lead battery. So let me just show that real quick. If you're in Black Box and you want to say, show me all of the, you know, the, the products that are selling at least this much and have lead battery in it, because you know that's 100% a hazmat, that's how you could find, you know, all of those. But as far as a complete list of hazmat items, we do not have that. I try and stay away, honestly, from, from hazmat. But because of that, that could be an opportunity. Like a lot of people don't want to have to go through the, the process of dealing with the hazmat issues. So maybe you find that there's an opportunity for you to sell. Rico, this is episode number 30. Yes, this is episode number 30. All right. You said a lot that's going on here, a little bit going over my head. Um, yeah, we're talking about a lot here, and we're kind of all over the place on this episode. So if you want to rewatch these, you guys, you can go to Facebook, uh, Helium 10 page on Facebook, and then click the videos tab. Also, you can go to Helium 10 YouTube channel. These are going up there as well. All right. These kind of are really specific yet uh, questions about you know some Amazon. I've never dealt with that before. That's kind of a crazy thing, Sharia. Absolutely go to our uh, FBA High Rollers Facebook group. In there, we have over 55, actually almost 60,000 Amazon sellers. It's possible that somebody has has might have had that happen to them. I have never, ever heard of that, and that really sucks. Um, so make sure to go to the FBA High Rollers to, to ask if anybody has had that uh, situation. Let's see. My product might come in just before or after Christmas. My supplier told me because of Chinese New Year's, a reorder might be as late as March. What would be your advice to launch? Slow and steady, blitz it, and potentially sell out or what? All right. So um, it depends. Uh, if you know you can sell it, never hold back. That, that's what I got to say. I mean, if you got product and you're sitting on product, you already paid for it, sell it. Don't don't wait. Don't worry about running out because what does, do you know what Manny Coates says? If you're going to run out of your product, what do you do as soon as you run out? Yeah, close your listing. Mm -hmm. Close your listing, all right? So then you you freeze your your kind of um, positioning on a lot of things, and you're going to want to do that. A lot of people say, oh, maybe I should go ahead and raise the price so I slow down sales. No, don't slow down sales. You slow down sales, what's going to happen is your your, your rank is going to go down on, on certain search terms, and your velocity, your sales velocity is going to go down. So um, I would say as long as you're sure you can sell it right now, there's no reason just sitting on dead money. Absolutely sell it. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, closing your listing is going to preserve your uh, your sales velocity and your sales history. You will drop a little bit, 
but closing your listing is a lot better than leaving it open and selling zero for even one or two or three days, a couple weeks. That does not look good in Amazon's eyes. So do what Bradley said, close your listing. All right, Youssef says, if you are a new seller, what good advice regarding product research can you give me? Uh, can I compete with sellers who have 400 reviews as average, a good sales? Uh, I have a good supplier, but I don't know if I can compete in this niche. Is there any specialist to help for product research? Oh my goodness, the, the questions never end. Youssef, you're killing me. I love it though, I'm just playing. Do you recommend any services? I'm struggling and I know it's the most important place advice. All right, Youssef, those are all good questions. Um, 400 is hard. If you have zero reviews, yeah, it's going to be hard to um, compete with somebody with 400 because just think about it. If you're a buyer and you enter in, you know, collagen peptides and you see a, a listing that has five star reviews and 4,000 reviews, and then you see your listing with zero reviews, you probably wouldn't even click on yours. So you got to keep that in mind. Now, if every now if with 400, that's a little bit different. You know, there's some people who might give your product a shot but usually they say i remember anthony lee said uh in his um testing the magic number was like 12. if you have 12 reviews um it's a huge difference as if you have zero to 11 just psychologically and not much of a difference between like 13 and 50. so like 12 is the magic number where it gives this psychological um advantage i guess you could say where you can start competing with those guys who have two three four hundred reviews where they still would consider you instead of thinking that you're a complete newbie mm. so um try and get 12 reviews if you can i know that the next question is how do you get reviews and there's a million different ways but don't do black hat stuff you know don't pay people to give you reviews don't go to facebook groups and and, and solicit reviews don't tell your customers i'll give you your product free <laughs> if you if you leave a review you know the, the best way to get reviews is have a good product, maybe have a good follow-up sequence or a good follow-up email asking for an honest review. Um, we do not have specialists here to help with that. Uh, these videos should be the specialists for you, all right? We've done so many videos on product research right here, Yusuf. Definitely look back at uh, episodes like 23 to 26 of the AMA where we have some really golden nuggets for you to be able to do your research yourself. You don't need... Uh, an expert. You could become that expert just by using Helium 10. And that's the whole reason. Before, yeah, you would have to be an expert because how in the world would you know how to find what keywords um, your top competitors are ranking for? I mean, you, it would take hours and hours to do that or some kind of expert technique. Helium 10 does all the work for you. You just make a couple clicks and boom, you have the information at your fingertips. And I will also say the FBA High Rollers Facebook group or Helium 10 users group post all your questions in there. You can pretty much post everything but your product. Uh, a lot of helpful folks in there. Bradley, myself, Manny's in there. Uh, comment into a ton of folks, so be happy to help you in there. Well, Danny, this is not the way that Black Box was designed, but uh, it does show a maximum of 200. So I guess theoretically, you can actually put the in a certain category, the top BSR. However, a much easier way, if you really wanted to do this, um, for at least the top categories, you know, um, then you would just need our uh, 10K list. Is Do we have a direct link to the 10K list? Helium10.com slash 10K. Is that easy? There you go, 10K. All right, so you can get that from right there. What other, I, I, like this is ridiculous. I, I have been, we've been going nonstop. We haven't even touched one of the old questions and you guys wonder why I have to do the Midnight Madness episodes to get to the questions. Annette asked, how do you determine competitor conversion rate that? there at the bottom? Oh, I, I would have missed that. Uh, you cannot. I'm not aware of any way you can. Um, there's no yeah. way to do that. No way. I mean, um, there's black hat things I'm sure people do, but we always say, just say no to black to uh, black hats, even though all the hats I have are, are black. How do I do a headline ad? Um, I believe you have to have brand registry in order to do a headline ad. So, uh, Jeff, if you do not have brand registry, go and get brand registry, do a, a search for brand registry 2.0 on Google, and you'll find instructions on how to get that. Then you could uh, start doing headline ads unless they've opened it up to everybody, which I heard they've been wanting to do for a while, but I'm not sure if it actually happened. Let's see. Yusuf Reiko. Ooh. That's a good question. <laughs> and then Kevin followed up with almost the same thing. So, yep. Yep. So this is a different, do you know, she's probably talking about somebody just launches a product, you know, brand new product 
And the listing says there's like 500 reviews. Do you know what they're doing, Matt? Good. See, Matt's Matt's an innocent guy. He doesn't get mixed up in this black hattery. All right. This is something that Amazon is actually cracking down on. They even had a word for it in one of their latest TOS uh, updates, and I forgot what it was, but something about variation manipulation or, or some cool term like that. I forgot what it is, but what somebody, what these uh, sellers are doing, these bad guys, um, they're going in and finding like dead listings, like maybe listings that don't sell anymore. Um, they're completely out of stock, hasn't sold, but they had like 500 four-star reviews or something. So what they do is they're coming up with a new product. They'll make their product as a variation of that, right? So then they can, it looks like their listing has all the reviews and you'll notice this because you'll see that all of a sudden there's 400 reviews that all talk about collagen peptides, but this product is a tactical flashlight. So one way that you would know how, if they're doing that is by using review downloader. You know, if, if I'm on this listing right here, that's only one review. Let's see if I'm on this listing right here and I run helium 10 review downloader, and then all of the most common words, um, if all of the most common words are, have nothing to do with snow globe, like let's take a look here. Um, every night. So every night I know this is relevant, but if this said tactical flashlight, well, I know they, they, they did that review manipulation. So that's what happens. Sometimes you see a listing that has a million reviews and it's brand new. Well, they're gaming the system and Amazon is catching up with a lot of those guys and suspending some of them, uh, according to what that news release that I read. Kevin says, you guys mentioned get some reviews before doing your launch giveaway. So basically just let your listing sit there to get organic reviews or I'm missing something. Kevin, there's all kinds of different ways. You know, you can get reviews. Like there's the review program that Amazon provides. You know, sometimes that might take a couple months. Um, maybe you have a, you, you, you have a legitimate product. That's a variation that you had launched before. Right. Um, and it's similar to your product. You're not gaming the system. Well, if you had reviews on that, there's no problem entering your product, your new product as a variation, as long as it is a variation. What's not right is taking a collagen peptides listing. That's not your own. and trying to put a tactical flashlight there, but like, let's say you're, you have this product that has 294 reviews and it's a, uh, um, rotating star sky projection nightlight. And now you're coming out with a rotating airplane projection nightlight. Nothing wrong with making that a variation of this. And then, yeah, you, Amazon might let you take advantage of the reviews and it's not manipulation because it's an, it's the same product. It, it literally is a variation, you know, it's like a color variation. All right. So, um, there's all kinds of different ways that you can, um, have reviews, but again, we don't mention the black hat stuff on here because we don't suggest that. And people. you, you really gotta be scrappy with those first couple of reviews, right? So you can run PPC and still be on, on page seven or. Uh, 20 or 30 and, and not be seen and run PPC and have some sales trickle in and eventually have some reviews come in or you can kick scratch and fight and do everything you can to get initial reviews. Maybe you go to your neighbor and you sell a garden rake and you say, Hey, just launched a product on Amazon. Do you need a garden rake? And this, so this would help me out. Like do anything you can to get those while still being in within terms of service. Um, get creative. There's definitely ways to to get reviews and fall within Amazon's terms of service there at the very beginning. All right, next question from Richard. Richard says, I'm sourcing a product from China, but I want to add a US source item to the package. What's your suggestion to handle this the easier way? Well, you can do this yourself. You know, have everything shipped to you if you have a warehouse or um, you know a facility that can do this, or you, and then you, you combine it and then send it to Amazon. So that's one of the ways, you know, right there. Um, the other way is you can use a 3PL. There's uh, different companies out there who you send the stuff from your US side and this China side to them, and then they bundle it or kit it together. Sometimes that can get expensive though. So that's pretty much the only way. You can't have Amazon do the work for you. You know, you can't say, hey, Amazon, you're gonna get this shipment and you're gonna get this sh shipment. I need you to open up the bag and put it in there. I'm, I bet you, you know, eventually they're gonna offer that service. I mean, they offer everything else, you know, they could, but right now that's not an option. Um, Anka likes the new editions of X-Ray. Love it. I'm seeing a lot of doubles here. I think something's wrong with BeLive today. All right, John is talking to Kevin. Finally, all right, we, we finally it. caught up to live. So can we please get into our old questions? All right, uh, John says, John Whitney says, this is finally from helium10.com questions. John says, how much is this gonna cost me? Helium 10, I'm assuming he's talking about. John, it's gonna put you out a whole 97 bucks a month, uh, and that's it, to run your business. 
uh, on Amazon, possibly create a million dollar business, multi-million dollar business, sell it one day only for 97 bucks a month. Uh, we don't just have a keyword tool. We don't just have a product research tool. Uh, don't just have refunds, hijack alerts. Everything I mentioned at the beginning of the show is all included in the platinum plan, which is 97 bucks a month. If you're a bigger seller, 197 bucks a month. But again, we've got an literally an all-in-one tool suite, all offered for 97 bucks a month. So my computer like it. mine tells me that's about like three dollars and fifty cents a day or something. What are some things that people have no trouble paying three dollars and fifty cents a day on? Starbucks is the easy one. Starbucks, pizza, pizza. Not even uh, my slices of pizza where I am cost like four or five dollars. You know, I, I I go for the good stuff. A double double at In and Out. A double double animal style. Anybody who's not in California don't know about double double animal style. But you guys, that's that's worth the the next Helium Ten social that we do. You guys got to come out a day early and uh, treat us. Are there any In and Outs near the office here? Oh yeah. Oh, there is. I've never. Okay, you got Matt. Hey, Matt's got to treat me when I'm off my diet. No, no, I can do the the protein wrap right, and yeah. there's no carbs. Perfect. All right. So we digress about food. Um, let's see. All right. Thank you for that question, John. And we're going to have a, a discount. So that not only is it not $97, we have a discount. So it's only going to be like 48 bucks for you for the first month. So <laughs> such a deal. What did John, John say? Please don't buy me a garden rake. I don't have a garden right now or <laughs> a yard, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, Shell says, I like my gas. No, Shell says, I was under the impression that you should not repeat your keywords in the back end search terms. Has this changed recently? Matt? Would you uh, read that again? Uh, she says, or he or she says, I was under the impression that you should not repeat your keywords in the back end search terms. Has this changed? Yeah, you don't need to. You only need your keywords in either your front end or your back end one time. You can repeat them. There's a number of different folks who have different opinions. We found that you only need keywords in your listing once. Um, I don't know anything to add. Um, yeah, for the, for the search terms, I always just put the ones that um, don't make sense in the first page or in the in the front end. But the times I do duplicate ones would not be what you call the search terms, but the subject matter. So what Matt says is one hundred percent correct for search terms. I wouldn't repeat, but. If you want to take it deeper, subject matter, um, people have told me, and I've tested this a couple times. I don't have enough data points to like say it 100%, but it seems like search terms is very important, or I'm sorry, subject matter is very important for the listing. And if you're going to do a, a product launch and a keyword, I would duplicate that phrase, put it right there in the subject matter, at least during the time that you're trying to rank. And um, actually, sometimes if I have a word, that does not index. And this actually goes to a question that Jolene just said, I have words in my title and backend that are indexing. Why? So if there is something that you just can't get to index, throw it in subject matter and in 15 minutes, refresh and see if it indexes. All right. Um, if it's index indexable, it's going to happen. It's going to work with that subject matter is so powerful for indexing. So if that doesn't work, Jolene, then yeah, you need to open up a case with Amazon and say, Hey, I have this word in there. As long as it's not like something like bestseller or free or marijuana or an adult word or something like that, those or a brand name from another, um, uh, another competitor or a word that's trademarked, those kind of things you can never get indexed for. But if you think it's just a regular word, like, Hey, my word is lamps and it's in my title and it's relevant to my listing. Why can't I get indexed for it? Open up a case with Amazon. Um, use index checker in Helium 10 to see if you're indexed first. Remember, there's three different checks. But if, you, if you're if you not indexed for all three of those checks and it's in your title and you know it's not a forbidden word, something's up. Definitely open up a case with Amazon. Thank you for that question, Shell. Whew, we've been rocking and rolling. What do you say? Look at this. Look at this. Reiko with the trivia. I just realized both of your last names end in ton. Ton squared Austin. We're, th we're two tons of fun right here. <laughs> I never, did you ever realize? No, I never realized no. that too. All right. Very good. Um, okay. Next question. One last one from the helium 10. I think I'm going to have to do another nighttime one here to get to these questions of what we only got to three from this because we had, look at this 125 comments today live so Love far. It. Keep them coming. This, how would you say this name? Giaume. Yeah. Giaume. 
why would I choose Helium 10 over other search engines? Or maybe I'm assuming he's talking about tools, he or she. So Matt, why should he use Helium 10? We know you have a lot of choices out there. So we, okay, so why? why <laughs> I was just on an airplane, that's what they said. Yeah, we're getting all the salesy questions today. So kind of what oh. we said with uh, John, right? So we're not just a keyword tool, we're not just product research. We literally have everything you need to run your Amazon mm -hmm. business, minus one or two things, which, like we said at the beginning of the show, we're working on a few very, very cool things. So we lost the camera. There we go. Now we got it back. All right, go ahead. So I don't know how much of that you no, guys got. No, only one second I, I cut off. Yeah, go ahead. But plain and simple, we've got literally everything you need to run your business in one tool suite. All the data communicates with each other. Um, all the tools communicate with each other. And yeah, I don't know. Anything you would add, Bradley? Super, like. 97 bucks a month for one tool, one yeah. software, 20 plus tools. Um, it's a no brainer in my opinion. I think Bradley is about to share a coupon code. Yes, I am. All right, all right, here we go guys. First of all, two things. This is episode 30. We need to do a giveaway for a shirt today. Um, shirt giveaway, let's see. Should we do the what we regularly do or? Yeah, let's what? do two of them. Two of them. All right. Episode 30, we're going to give away two shirts. So you're going to, what, pick two numbers maybe? Let's see that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So do we have, are you, I don't want you always, Matt I always comes out of these things with, uh, it looks like a five-year-old uh, with all this writing on his hands, but I guess we're going to have to do it. So go ahead and put yeah. two numbers. Well, what are we going to do today? One out of a hundred since it's two or that's too much? Oh my God. Let's do one to 50. One to 50. All right. Matt, quick, is, rapid thinking, fire. don't start yet guys. Don't start yet because Matt hasn't written it down. Do not, anything that you guys say right now is not going to go. I'm making sure that he's got it. All right. Cool. Okay. All right, guys. We're starting right now, one to 50. Give me the numbers and I'll let you know if you win. Give me the numbers, man. This is going to go so fast because we have so many people on here. I hope I can keep up. All right. I don't see any yet. All right. Anka's ready to get a shirt. She says, uh, Reiko, not 49. What else? What else? Come on. Oh my God. Hold on. Not 49. Lizzie. How, how did the first two guesses were 49? What are the odds of that? Not, uh, not 35, not 30, not 27, not 38. Lizzie and Rako. Not buy a 12, lottery ticket. not 30, not 26, not 47, not 21, not 27. One winner. 32, not 32, not 37, not 25. All right. We got one winner, Margaret. I believe Margaret from uh, Australia, seven. That's the first one. All right, one more number, guys. One more. Oh, we got another one. Boom. Anya, 36. So show it just so that they know that we're not uh, making oh, this up. Babe. Seven and 36. Awesome, yeah. guys. Good job. Uh, send either Matt or myself, or um, you, you'll you see somebody's posting in here from Helium 10. You can like click there and, and click the profile and send them a private message to with your name, your shipping address, and what size t-shirt you want. We gave away two for the price of zero today. Next thing to do, a lot of the tools we have that we demoed for you guys today are not available on the um, free version. We had a couple of comments like, hey, how come that's grayed out for me? Well, yeah, we, we have a lot of stuff that you can do on the, the free, but if you've had the free for a while, now you can't use some tools. So guys, I have a special code for you. We do this every time. Um, uh, for just for you guys, we don't give away this code. It, this code is going to self-destruct like mission impossible. We can only guarantee it's going to last through the end of this, uh, episode. One thing I can guarantee is tomorrow. Uh, if this is 11 two, if this is November 2nd, Friday, and you're watching this on the replay, don't even try this code because it's not going to work. What time it goes off tonight? I'm not sure. So I highly suggest getting it. Anybody who's a free member, this is the code to use. And this is made by our. Awesome employee, Rich. I think today is his birthday. Yep. So there, this is the code for it's my B day. It's my B day. 50% off your first month of Helium 10. So instead of being a Starbucks that you're out for the whole entire month, you know, a day, $3, you're only off of like $1.50. That's like a Snickers bar or something like that. All right. A Snickers bar less or uh, a side order of fries. You can't even get fries for $1.50 nowadays. All right. So guys, I highly recommend doing this. It's risk-free at the end of the first month. If you decide that you're not going to sell on Amazon or that it wasn't worth it within 30 days, just ask for your money back and we'll give you your money back. But 
I have literally never heard of one person asking for their money back because they said they didn't find the value in the full suite of tools. The only ones who have done it is people who have said, you know what, uh, Amazon's not for me. I'm gonna sell on eBay or I'm gonna sell on jet.com or whatever. Of course, then Helium 10, it's not gonna be worth it for you. But if you plan to sell on Amazon, guys, look at the testimonials that people are saying here about how important uh, Helium 10 is for you, all right? So make sure to use it. Matt, anything to add about that? Um, no, nothing to add, but do we have one more? Oh, another or, code. What's the what's the other code? Yeah. So if you're watching this on the replay and it's outside of the first couple hours that we recorded this, use code AMA10 for 10% off. Um, smaller code, but still works just the same. Um, yeah. So AMA10, 10% off for life. Oh, life. That's like an old song right there. For life. That, that, the way I have it there doesn't make sense. But anyways, AMA10, 10% off. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, now all the videos, like all the AMAs are up on YouTube right now, right? Yeah, we're awesome. almost caught up, but they should all be there. Cool. So guys, um, watch us on, you. follow us on YouTube, all right? Make sure to subscribe. All the new training videos come there right away. Follow us on Instagram. How do they find us on Helium 10 Software, right? Yep. Helium 10 Software on Instagram, YouTube. We don't have a Snapchat yet. We're not that uh, millennial, I guess. But um, what, what else are we on? That's it, right? That's it. All right, guys. See you next Tuesday. Um, let us know. Right, right, go ahead right now. Go ahead and uh, comment below. Let me know if you guys need uh, another session for the questions tonight. Who's going to come if we do another Midnight Madness tonight? Because we're 200 questions behind. I got to get to some of these. So let me know be below if you guys want that. Uh, and you can watch on the replay. You don't have to stay up until midnight. But anyways, guys, thank you. We'll see you next Tuesday at 10, 9, 10? 10, 10, 10, 10 a.m. Thanks, Tuesday. See you guys.